guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifty adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So it is Flipping Friday. Flipping Friday is a collab, a challenge hosted by Jamie of Board of Bananas. Flippin' Friday collaboration hosted by Jamie, she just asked us to take an item and flip it. So it could be a thrifted item, it could be a garage sale item, it could be something you have laying around your house, somebody gave it to you. And as a thrifter, I love participating in these challenges because I pretty much flip whatever treasures I find at the thrift store. So in today's video, I am going to be bringing you 10 old windows that I am upcycling and making over. So these are definitely a flip. They're going from windows to home decor to fit into the farmhouse style that I absolutely love. So if you follow my Facebook page, you may know that there was a business outside of their state that came up, somehow found my booth and emptied me out to weeks in a row so part of me doing 10 windows is because I need to get my inventory brought back up so uh, we are desperately trying to get inventory because I usually would have done three windows at a time but now I am doing 10 I like to bring a window in and then when it sells bring another one but just in case they show up again which is it is a blessing and a compliment for somebody to come in and buy your booth, but then it also is, wow, it makes for a lot of work and I still want to be able to bring you YouTube videos. So um, unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, I am doing 10 windows and giving you 10 different ideas of how to turn them into the farmhouse style to make them into wall decor. So I know this is not a window, but I could not pass up this frame for $5. I knew this would be absolutely gorgeous removing that glass and putting some pallet wood in it. So on this window frame, would you have just thrown it away? I know it looks beastly right now but I absolutely can envision the same thing for this one it has no glass in it and putting some pallet wood in it to make it nice and strong now for this two pane window I just picked this up for ten dollars off of a marketplace though I would prefer the glass to be broken itself um, my ideas for these are always to put the top piece, you know, with some pallet wood and some, you know, some wording. So unfortunately, just like this big or very big window that already has broken glass, we will be removing that glass to replace it with pallet wood. And then I picked up a set of eight of these bad boys where when in Marketplace, I guess there was no size. And so when I went to pick them up, whew, they are a beast of a window. And then this one I also picked up with the other window that I paid $10 for. She wanted $15 at first, but I told her that, you know, I have to take all this glass out. There's not much you can do with half glass and half window. So I did get it for $5. And it's very glittery. Somebody really had some fun with glitter on this. I don't know if that's showing up on camera or not. And then this pretty teal window I got at my local Habitat, I believe for $5. And I absolutely love this nice little size of this window. And I'm excited to be able to put some chicken wire and some um, grain sack behind it. And at my Habitat also, I picked up three of these beautiful three-paned windows. Unfortunately, one had glass that was cracked, but I absolutely can just envision just cleaning these up and re them so that glass stays in there. They're just absolutely beautiful. And this very large just one-pane glass window kind of went with that other window frame that had no glass. I had bought that off Marketplace um, a long time ago and I'm still working through these windows. 
And then for this window, I got this at my local Habitat also. I was happy that the glass was broken out. I know that's weird to say, but I got picked this one up for $2. And I know it's got some brokenness, but that never bothers us. So of course, the first thing that we have to do starting out is my husband Chris is going to be removing the glass. You know, you have to be very careful with this. Sometimes the caulking is gone enough that you can just slip it out, you know, and then it also has um, those little metal tabs that keep the window in place if the caulking is gone. So, you know, this is just one of those you gotta be very careful. Sometimes you have to break the glass. You know, there's just, it's, it's This is a love of old windows and what to do to make them into home decor. So sometimes, you know, I know it's a lot of work, but the end result makes it worth it. So to help Chris out, I'm taking the easy frame window of just taking this glass out of this frame. And those are those little metal tabs I'm talking about that help hold glass in. And so then, yeah. And then this one has that inner frame that if I left it in the palette would, would not fit. So it's just nailed in, so I'm just hammering it out. Now, if you thought taking glass out was messy enough, wait till I get to sanding these windows. Oh my goodness, this will create such a mess. There's so many layers of paint. Yes, put a dust mask on and then I just sand away. And the nice thing about using the orbital sander when I am, you know, getting these layers of paint off is it really vibrates that window and any of that loose caulking will, you know, you know, it will become unadhered. And so I know where I need to caulk it. Now, when I'm doing this frame, I know that I'm not going to get all of that teal off, but I definitely want to get it off the edges of the side. So when I paint it black and distress it, that will, you know, that black paint will soak in. And so when I distress it, that will come through. And I know I can't get the inside by the window with this kind of, you know, sander. So I'll have to do, do some hand sanding. So if you're wondering if I sand both sides, yes, I do. I do the front and the back, you know, get the, any of that chippy paint right off. So on this big window that didn't have any glass, I'm pretty sure when I picked these off a of marketplace, this they must have used these as a greenhouse. So I have to remove all these randomly weird nails, um, especially, yeah, I want to get those removed before I try to sand it. And then yes, on this frame, it still has some of those little metal tabs left. So I need to get those removed so that when um, we go to put the pallet wood in it, that those will not be a hindrance of putting it in. And yes, when I'm sanding, I'm not sanding to remove all the paint. I'm just sanding to get all that loose chippy stuff off, release what, you know, as you can see that that caulking's just falling right off. This is just years of buildup of never pre-sanding these windows. You know, you absolutely have to love old windows to go at it like this. And then I'll be removing any hardware that's on any of these windows, whether I put it back or not. It just depends on what the finished product is and what we end up doing to it. So if you wonder, does she clean these off? Yep, I did all that sanding and all, you know, they're all ready to get their cleaning of crud cutter. Now I do not worry about cleaning the glass. I'm only worried about cleaning the frame for right now. And then yes, I know that I did not clean the glass and I know that it has paint all over the glass and that it's a mess, but I do tape off my glass when I do these. I have enough to clean off as it already is. And especially for the ones that need caulking, this just gives a nice line as you can see how much of that caulk is missing. So yes, I tape all these windows off both sides. So now I just pick up this glazing at Menards and this is just going to help hold those windows in it. I, I mean, I'm not weather sealing it to, for these to be outside. I'm caulking these so that they will, the glass will not fall out when whoever purchases them. You know, I, I would not want that glass to fall out after I put this much work into it. So then I just run a bead of caulk of this glazing down and then I just use my finger to spread it. Um, evenly because I know I, I have not removed all the caulk but you know these are these perfectly and perfect beautiful old windows. So now that I got all the windows caulked that needed to be caulked I'm on to my Kills Paint and Primer and what I'm doing here is each 
each one of these windows will get two coats on each side that seals that old paint in and i'm not painting to cover i'm just painting to make them look clean and add you know blend in that caulk so it look you know it's glass so you see through for both sides so it's not really one of those jobs that you're painting to have crisp i'm just painting to get these cleaned and because i'm going to be distressing them anyway so if you're w wondering where we always get all this pallet wood, that is what my husband's day job is. He works for a pallet company that he can buy pa extra pallet wood. And so we are very blessed and I think God sent us this way on purpose. So this is just pallet wood that we've, you know, we kind of, you know, have pieces and parts. And so he had plenty to do this project. It even had taken a bookshelf that we thought we were going to use for a display. And that's what some of these pieces were, but I just didn't like it for a display for in our booth. So the so this is actually kind of nice because some of the pieces I had stained. So it just gives it that nice, unique look. Then after he gets all his boards cut to size and what he needs, he just takes the brad nailer and he nails them in place. There's These hold them enough in place. There's not really any glue required. So for the pieces that have pallet wood in them, I do a tape off because I don't want to cover that pallet wood. So I do tape them off just like I tape off the windows. And then same with this frame, I'm just gonna give it a couple coats to cover because these are old chippy windows and old chippy frame with pallet wood, you know, so I that when I distress it, I just want to make it look clean. And then when sanding this three paned window, I noticed that there was a little piece of wood coming apart. It was not detached, but to not take away from that corner, we're just using a little bit of the CA glue and that has a dryer so it is an instant bond and an instant dry see how it just he's just sticking a little bit and then as soon as he applies that dryer and holds it for a few seconds it's just it's just that it's adhered and it's ready to be painted again so now what this is what the pieces look like with their first two coats on the one side of paint. They're all freshened up. They all look clean, you know, and that's my reasoning for painting them. One, I want them to use the white that I like. And then another thing, I want them to look clean. And now I can flip them over and start this next process of the two coats on the other side. So to clean these hardware pieces, especially the one that was over painted, I just soaked them in some hot water and Murphy's oil soap overnight to get as much of the paint I could get off. You know, there's a lot of paint on these because they are windows and I'm just going to have them spray painted in the Rust-Oleum flat black and then seal that in with the polycrylic mat. So if I choose to use these in the finished product, they will be all ready to go. So now that I have the two coats of paint on these windows, I am going to be whitewashing that pallet wood just to blend it in. So like the whitewashing I'm doing is where I just have a little bit of a dry brush, put a little bit of paint on it, take a lot of the paint off, and then just lightly, you know, let those bristles just grab any of those raised edges of that pallet wood. So now all the windows and the frame have their two coats of paint on both sides and the pallet wood is whitewashed. And so now it's on to sanding to distress and to make these nice and smooth. So what I'm doing with this orbital sander on these windows is just like when I hand sand, I am going to go heavy over those corners, let some of that natural wood show through. And like I said, when I was sanding this first time, I was just sanding to get that chippy off. I want them to look distressed. I want it to grab onto pieces where there's paint chunks left and that just gives it that nice aged look. So I really go over the corners and then on these pallet wood, I will run it over so that it is nice and smooth. So now that all the windows are sanded in distress, I am going to finish them up with a coat of Varathane finishing wax. That's just going to seal and protect that paint, give it a nice smooth finish. And then I choose to leave the tape on because sometimes this wax is a little bit hard to get off those windows. That's another reason that I tape off. 
So one thing I always do as a reseller is I always make sure that we have a hanging system on the back of what we sell. So Chris is just doing these little um, hooks, you know, that you weed in some wire and twisting it, making sure that it doesn't leave sharp edges, but that it's nice and strong for as heavy as this window is. You would not want it to fall off your wall. And for the items that have the pallet wood in, we usually hang some type of a wreath. And I had had a wreath already made. Um, actually, I thrifted this cotton wreath. So we're just centering it in the middle of the board and using these little white hook hangers just to hold that wreath on. Oh yes, now that I have the tape peeled off, there's still that mess of all the previous owner's paint jobs. And so now I get to pre-clean all that paint off and get, get these windows as sparkling as old windows can be. So when it comes to stenciling on old windows, most of the windows will be bigger than a 12 by 24 mat. Cricut Imaging, I went to the little search engine, typed in bed and breakfast, and then found this image. And then this image is a double image, so I have to unattach the two parts so I just have the bed and breakfast and delete the other part that I do not want and then size this appropriate to the window that I'm putting it on. Now to make sure that I am centered in the window I just measure out from the sides and me and then you know see how far my image is and so I just put some masking tape on there to make sure when I go to stick my image that I am centered. So for my next stencil on my next window, I am doing this little sparrow. So what I'm doing here is I am typing it out. And I do have to say compared to the um, silhouette, curving words on the Cricut is a little bit easier. You just go up and hit a curve button to the curve that you want. You can actually make it a whole circle if you want other than, you know, I'm comparing silhouette to um Cricut right now so I'm pretty happy with the curve feature of this on this on the Cricut and then also to this little sparrow's bed and breakfast I'm adding a little sparrow a little birdie and what I'm doing here is just using the image that I had saved to my library and then I just made some stripes using like this like I was showing you here that I just tapped on the little square you know over to the side and then stretched it out so now I'm switching over to my silhouette because I could not figure out how to make a longer than 24 image on the Cricut. So now we're on to my silhouette. Very blessed, I, I am going to say that. Um, so this is a farmhouse word that I took right off of their design store. And this this contraption here is a roller so it helps feed into the machine when you don't need a mat and then you are um, see how I had I had set it up and above what a 24 image would be so that it continuously cuts and the roller just helps keep it straight and narrow I tried doing this without the roller and I had no luck at luck it always went wonky on me so i absolutely thought this was worth the 24 dollars on amazon to hold my vinyl to make sure that it doesn't waste vinyl because oh i can tell you when i tried to do this before without that roller i did not have any luck and I also find that when I am doing a very large image like this to weed it out is that I actually take an X-Acto knife and I cut it off in sections. I take the little pieces off first and then I kind of just take it off in sections like I'm doing here. That way I'm not, I've done, I don't have all that sticky vinyl that might come back and grab one of the stenciling, the word on that I don't want it to. Like I said, this is a... I want to say this was 31 or 42 inch. I don't remember right offhand, but it was a very large window. So, and here I am again. I just, you know, I tape off so I can center. So when I put it on my, you know, like I said, if I had to choose the hardest product project that I do, I would say the hardest project that I do was putting stencil on glass. And I use the Duck brand clear 
contact paper. It's got to be the duck brand. And for my transfer tape, it does not leave any sticky residue. And to make it used and abused, <laughs> here I am just laying it on my um, palette just to make it a little bit less sticky. Now for three of these windows, I have cut some drop cloth linen and what I'm doing here is I am going to tea stain, coffee stain, dye it. As I have found out, I guess there's no real recipe. You just throw some coffee in and some tea bags in and I just use those, the innards of my Keurig pod and I just bring it to a boil and then put all the fabric in and then let it sit to its cool so I can squeeze it out and then put it in the dryer to dry. So now for the six pane window, I am going to add some chicken wire to it. So as you see, I have a beast of a roll of chicken wire, but this is all I could find the last time I needed to buy it. So, and now I'm just cutting it off and stapling it on. And I staple pretty much every little, you know, place down. And then what I do is I um, hammer in any sharp edges. And then this is how I, um, did the drop cloth over it stapling it on also i absolutely love how this tea coffee stain dye just turns out and yep i do iron them just to you know you're not going to get what you think is wrinkles it's just the marks from where it died so on the ones that I put the drop cloth and um, the chicken wire on to hide the staples from behind, I just take that brown paper that you get at the Dollar Tree and then I cover up the back and I just hot glue that on and then take an X-Acto knife around the edges just to give that nice clean line so you don't have to see all those messy staples. So I found these three stars and then I painted them up like the black that I absolutely love to paint in antiquing wax. And that can be a whole separate video because you know I'm, do I'm doing 10 windows here. So we did some E6000 glue and now we're hot gluing them down and then going to be needing some weight to keep them there overnight. If we would have tried to staple or nail this thin type of wood in, it would just have gone straight through. So the E6000 will keep this as a permanent bond. And here you see, I just grabbed some of my Crocs and there they sat overnight, just gluing and drying and adhering well. So now I'm back to my silhouette and I need to make another curved image. So I need to get into those little shapes over by where the text size is. And so I made this oval circle and now I am going to be typing out silo, silo fields. And so as I type that out, as you see, it's highlighted in green and then there's that little plus sign. So what I'll do is I will go through and I will tap on that little plus sign and then drag it on to that circle and it will make my image curved. And then I need to unattach it. I forgot to leave a space. And so I'm just adding that space back in before I unattach the two of them and then pull them apart as I'm unattaching it and then clicking on that oval and deleting that. And now I have the curve that I want. And then the same thing with this um, mercantile market, every time I go to click it, it will not stay all into one line. So I need to do the same thing. I'm making another shape and this time it is a long rectangle. And so that way, you know, I was trying to see if I could just take it and drag it on there, but it would not let me. So I had to end up deleting that and then typing it out and dragging it along the long um, box that I had made. You know, as we talk about these two different machines, you know, I think this is a pain. If I just wanted it to be down underneath each other, I would have typed it that way, but... So this is just one of those things when we're talking about a Cricut in a silhouette, you know, each has their own difficulties. So I'm just sharing with you guys, this is what I had to do to make it, this long word be, you know, what I needed to be for my window. So see how I had typed it out and now I am trying to drag it and why is it going upside down? So don't get frustrated guys, it, just keep on working it. So I'm going slowly, slowly, slowly so that it stays on that line. Cause I know my line, my little square 
long rectangle is long enough so I'm just going really slow and there we go I made it so just don't give up and then I need to unattach the two and then delete that square now what I'm going to show you here is what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to flip my mat so it is horizontal it is long way and so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go ahead and I measured out my window I know what size I need my window to be I'm going to lock in those dimensions and then now when I go back through is I'm going to figure out which pieces and parts will fit on the mat for me to have cut out because I know that it, the mat is is not as big as what my window is and so that's where you just have to break it down into sections of what you can cut out and then add so this is where like masking tape on your window just centering it will work I know it's very intimidating when you're doing a very large sign like this so if you just break it down in sections this is this will we can make this work so here I have it on my um, contact paper, the first half of what I'm going to put on this window. So what I was doing off, I was doing the reverse side, making sure that I had it centered where my masking tape needed to be. And since I have said before when I'm doing windows that vinyl sticks very quickly and very <laughs> great suction on vinyl and glass. So what I'm doing here is just trying to get my centering point so I can go little by little so it's not all adhered at the same time and I can work it on slowly. So I just, that's where that white paper underneath there is just what it, I came from the vinyl what I had taken the vinyl off of and that just I can move that down little by little as I get it adhered to the glass and that way that it's not all sticking at once and then I don't have to worry about the vinyl you know being creased or bubbles or anything like that so I'm just gingerly let you know working my way down so I saved my biggest window, my most complicated window, even though the farmhouse one was a big window, it was just one word. For this window, I want to do kind of like a grain sacking, but do it in kind of, I, I mean, like an old feed sack. So what I'm doing here is I went in and I grabbed a rooster and I just wanted the outline of the rooster. So I deleted everything else that was in my studio on that and now I'm doing the same thing here I'm curving another letter so I had to or another word so I had to go in and make a curve you know a round oval again and then type out what I wanted to say and then follow the line of the curve and then unattached I will say that Cricut I do think is a little bit easier now that I can just curve it like this so this is a lot of steps to go through but I've done it before and I want it to be curved and I can't figure out how to do a large Cricut mat yet. So we will just keep going back and forth. Like I said, I'm blessed to have two machines. And then I did the same thing for this is what I did is I got everything that I wanted to have on my window and then I got it the, my image to the size that I needed it to be on the window and then made sure that my mat was horizontal so when I was cutting I could cut it out in pieces to attach it to the window. So it's the same thing where I needed to measure off and make sure that I had masking tape so I knew exactly where my centering point was. So this is going to be cut out in a three sections and luckily when I turned it I realized that I could do it on a 24 mat but I'm still not I'm still going to use my roller um, so that was kind of nice even though I can't cut it all out you know um, 24 inches is a little bit easier to control and then after I got the bottom section, now I'm doing the middle section, which is my rooster. And so I'm just making sure that, you know, his little cone's not, you know, touching or his little feet aren't touching. And so just moving it and then I'm on a attaching because some of the little bit of the rise and shine was um, going to be in when I was cutting so not to waste vinyl I'm just unattaching the two so I just cut the chick or the chicken or the, the rooster and then I proceeded with the same process where I left Tim you know I put him on the contact paper to use his transfer tape and then um, left a little bit of the you know where the vinyl came off that 
paper, the white paper underneath it, and then just gingerly worked it on little by little until I had the whole image adhered. And then just kind of doing a rocking motion. Like that contact paper luckily releases, <laughs> but it, it takes some muscles to get this contact paper off of the glass itself. So I absolutely love the finished project, but like, oh, and there's my supervisor making sure that I am doing everything correctly. And now I just need to add this rise and shine. So what I did is I just cut, you know, even the, the transfer tape right down. So I had the size that I needed. So when I put my masking tape down to make sure that I was nice and centered, you know, nothing's saying you have to, you know, leave your contact paper, your transfer tape as is. So I cut it down. And so then I had the perfect fit. So my hopes for this video that I have inspired you to look at old windows. If you have old windows laying around, I hope that I have given you at least one idea of what you can do with a old window. I absolutely love that this was broken glass out that we could put this pallet wood in there and it was cost efficient to have that cotton wreath because I believe I thrifted that for $5.09 and we all know how much those go for on Hobby Lobby. But I absolutely love putting pallet wood in these old windows and we were blessed to, you know, for where my husband works. And I just love the simplicity of the bed and breakfast. And then that old star just painted white, you know, just it's a nice way to dress up a room that these can pretty much fit into anybody's decor. And when it comes to these unique three paned windows, I absolutely am living them what they are. Beautiful antique three paned windows. You don't see these very much anymore. So I, j I love that they were a set of them and that I just took them back and cleaned them up and made them beautiful like they deserve to be. And I can tell you when we came to do this window and thinking how long this window was and how big this window was that I was surprised that we had pallet wood that would fit that <laughs> that width. It was just, but I absolutely love that I ran across these stars and I absolutely love the reason for me of putting that um, fabric behind was because we needed a great hanger system and I did not want you to be able to see through the glass and see the hanger system so I could have left it clear but that was the reasoning for putting the fabric on the back of that window and I absolutely love when I run across frames that I can put pallet wood in I am funny about I know there's lots of pictures at thrift stores but I know nothing about artwork and I would hate to take a picture out of a frame just so I could have the frame to put pallet wood in. And I know we're towards the end of the lavender season, but every time I put lavender wreath in one of these, it sells pretty fast. So why not finish up the season with a little bit more lavender? And I'm glad that I could upcycle the, the six pane broken glass window and put that fabric and that chicken wire. And I know you kind of see that space in between where the six pane is, but if you try to staple that or glue that onto there, it would, that's just not very thick wood and very dry and brittle. But once I hang this on a wall, it will flatten out, especially if the new owner wants to put a wreath or anything on top of it. I just wanted to keep it nice and simple. And I love that I figured out that I can tea stain, coffee stain that drop cloth linen because I very seldom do ever I ever really run across grain stacks or feed stacks that I get to purchase. And I absolutely love just coming up with simple ideas for windows that are kind of general, just like this sign that can kind of go for anybody's farmhouse decor. And yes, I know I could have put the drop cloth linen behind this window also, but maybe, you know, when you're doing this many windows, I try to keep them as, you know, a little bit similar, a little bit different, and maybe somebody doesn't want that look. Maybe they have a pretty beautiful wall color that they want to show up. So just the simplicity of this white framed with that black vinyl, I absolutely love it. And I have to say, I had a couple different wreaths and a white star, and I just could not decide. But after doing those black stars, I just went right back to that and doing another black star for this. I just absolutely love the black star against that palette wood, especially with that black vinyl for the wording. 
So I hope after watching today's video, I have inspired you to look at old windows in another way. If you weren't already an old window lover like me. Remember, this is part of Flipping Friday collab hosted by Jamie of Border Bananas and her channel link will be down in my description box along with all the wonderful participants, wonderful DIY creators in this challenge. So click on that playlist, get a cup of coffee or whatever drink your choice and sit back and enjoy some fabulous DIYs. And as always, I thank you for watching today's video. And if you're part of my YouTube family that has helped me grow to over 10,000, I am still humbly blessed by that. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to become part of my YouTube family, just hit that subscribe button, give me a like, you know, hit that thumbs up and hit the notification bell to know when I have uploaded a new video.